Hi everyone, this is Sam from Bug Crowd, and today we're talking with Frederick, and uh, we're going to be asking him about some of his tips and tricks about how he approaches bug hunting, and um, get a little insight into how he approaches things. So first, um, Frederick, if you could please kind of introduce yourself, talk a little bit about like who you are and and, and what you do with respect to, to bug hunting and security. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Frederick, and I go by the nickname of Elmroth or Elmroot or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so uh, I've been active in the bounty scene since 2010 with when I first found vulnerability in uh, Google. And I've been an even longer member of the InfoSec scene even back since 2005. Uh, in 2012, I founded Detectify with a few other people. It's a cloud-based uh, vulnerability scanner uh, for pen testing web apps, basically. And well, it, in essence, I mean, all the people at Detectify were really active in the bounty scene. So yeah, we hang around by crowd. We've been there since the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of France and so forth. Yeah, a lot of you guys are active over there. You guys were just um, Franz from Detectify uh, was over here in San Francisco recently because of the launch conference that you guys presented at. And oh it's yeah, like you guys had a lot of um, good buzz coming out of that. It was really great to see a lot of people hearing about you for the first time, and then uh, they seem to be pretty excited about it. Oh yeah, we won the international pitch competition. That's right. That's oh. right. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, for those that are just hearing about you guys, it's detectify.com. So detect ify.com, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, to uh, my first question for you was um, one that I think comes up every once in a while with, with folks. And I think each, I've heard different methodologies come up with mm. different people, which is how do you choose the bug bounties that you work on? Um, you know, well, there's like a lot of them, you know, and so how do you oh, yeah. go about like, okay, you know, today I have some time or whatever it is, like, I'm going to go with this one. Personally, uh, nowadays it's so many bug bounties. Uh, so when I find a new method or I don't know, a, a specific vulnerability that I find interesting, I go about to actually like visit every seeing a bounty and a check for that specific vulnerability. If it can be automated, then I do it because that's what I do for a living. So, uh, so that's basically it. Uh, whatever like gets me interested, I'll automate it and try to find it wherever possible. And yes, yeah. that specific subset of vulnerability. So you kind of you find um, you find something in particular. It's kind of like a new discovery for you. Yeah, yeah. for example, yeah. If, I, if I find a, a, a plausible attack vector in Ruby on Rails apps, then I go around and try to fingerprint like, oh, okay, does this appear to be Ruby on Rails? Does it have a C-serve token the tag in the index page? If so, then I might uh, tamper a bit more with just that specific bounty, regardless of actually what the bounty amount is. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> some other methodologies I've heard is like some people look for, they kind of try to get a feel for activity. Mm -hmm. And if they see that this one particular bounty, for whatever reason, hasn't had a lot of activity on it, like maybe just mm -hmm. people haven't poked around on it because it's not the new and latest and greatest. Oh, yeah. Um, do you kind of do that too? Or, or are there any, besides the like, hey, I found this new hot volume, I'm going to try to try to. I actually don't. I actually don't go for those. Uh, it's, I believe it's too many researchers going for a low hanging fruits on the new yeah. ones. So I, I don't even bother. I mean, I, I try to go for more high hanging fruits, so to say. Yeah. If I can find some weird code flow somewhere, totally. then I'll try to think with that instead of actually going for like a reflective big success in every single get variable on the front page. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I don't know, you, you kind of get a feeling like, does this page feel variable? I don't know, it's, a, it's more of a feeling re really of what targets to choose and what okay. not to. I was just going to make a really bad matrix reference, uh, <laughs> but it, it just seems like, you know, like you have a feeling or you could, you could do the, the Star Wars reference, like there's a, a disturbance in the force. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so you kind of answered my question, uh, the, my next question actually, which is, right. was, was about um, how do you approach finding bugs? So you find you, um, like you were saying, you have one that you found on something and it's, you try to see if it's uh, in other places. Um, and then say you don't have that, you know, sort of new trick up your sleeve. Mm. Um, do you, I guess you just, you have some sort of bounties that you might be interested for whatever reason. And you, you have, you try to see if you have that feeling or you kind of poke around to see if there's those, maybe some indicators of that there's something else that you should look at. Uh, well, I always have something up my sleeve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, a good example was, I believe it was last year, uh, we were a bit short on cash, we were going on a road trip. Uh, so we thought that me and Matthias, who goes by the name of Ali Um uh, we decided like, hey, we need some cash for this trip. Uh, let's go for the highest paying bounties. And at that point it was Facebook and Google. So we went for Google and then we find our uh, external entity injection in uh, Google toolbar which gave us $10,000. So that's a, that kind of breaks like the automate and try to find stuff thing. Right. So yeah. We actually just went for Google and I just tried everything we could find until okay. we found something we wanted. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so uh, I was interested in, so this kind of ties into one of the reasons why we're talking today actually is um, this week we're launching the Bug Crowd Forum. Oh, yeah. The forum is a place that uh, you know I've been working on. I've been working on this project for a while, and the goal is that <clears throat> it's a it can be a place for all researchers across all skill levels, all skill sets, and you know all around the world. Researchers mm -hmm. to come together and really help develop and refine their skills, uh, learn more from others because everyone's got various interests and again different skill sets, um, mm -hmm. and also just share what they're doing and what they're working on. So I was interested in, are there any sort of skills that you want to improve on yourself um, or things that you want to learn more about that, you know, like this year or in the next several months or anything like that, that you're kind of yeah. like, I'd love to learn more about that. Yeah. So I want to go uh, even more low level, so to say, get more into network security other than web security. And also mobile has it so close to web, really. I mean, or web app or mobile apps talk to some backend web interface and so forth. So that's an interesting area. So both mobile and going more low level, I would say. Yeah, mobile um, is definitely, obviously it's huge because there's like yeah. what, a billion. Everyone have a mobile app, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, and as these scale, you know, they, the, the distribution on some of the biggest apps is insane. So yeah. Oh, yeah. a lot of, opportunity there <clears throat> so um so what are your are there any of um great tools or workflows that you have in your arsenal that you'd be willing to kind of talk about like this is how you know when you start working on something mm -hmm. this is like your go-to tool or workflow that works great for you that again you're willing to to talk about if this is oh, not yeah. secret I mean, sauce <laughs> bar suit of course i mean Everyone uses that when you do web. It's great to have plugins. You can code for it. You can, yeah, I mean, it's a Swiss army knife, really. And when it comes to target discovery and so forth, I go by a home written tool to find subdomains and so forth. And Enema on top of that to really scope up the targets and find some obscure ports and whatnot. Uh, great. And that's basically it. Out of that, I just make the tiny scripts to do whatever. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I think this is actually my last question here. Um, are there any tips for people that are trying to improve themselves or kind of move up the ranks, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. of, of security researchers or, uh, or bug county hunters? What, any sort of tips that you can give out to people that are maybe getting started or maybe not even just getting started, but you know, they've been doing it and they need to kind of take it to the next level? Yeah. So. My philosophy is the bigger and more expensive that is, say Google, for example, the easier it actually is to find vulnerabilities. It's a bigger attack surface. They have more stuff going around. They have legacy systems, new systems, acquisitions, 
whatever. I mean, it's just huge. So the odds of finding something on a bigger target is much more likely than a tiny one. And that's, yeah, that applies to everything really. Yeah. So it sounds kind of like, to put it in some other words, it's like the wider the scope. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the easier. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because I mean, um, not everyone's uh, Google and that they have like a billion subdomains and all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, or in then companies that they buy all the time and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, but I mean, the, wider the, the consensus system. is like, I, I believe at least that people feel like afraid or whatever to even try those targets, but because they believe such a huge company must be secure. Right. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Right. True. I mean, when you have, um, you know, I don't know how many employees Google has these days, but it's, I'm sure it's in the tens of thousands, high tens of thousands. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, when you have, you know, let's say 80,000 programmers pushing yeah. stuff live, you know, there's bound to be some uh, mess yeah, up. Some mistakes there. always slip through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, I, yeah. um, sorry. Oh, uh, I mean. Yeah, as I said, I mean, a startup, for example, a smaller company that might be really cool, doesn't have as much stuff, and it might be harder to find vulnerabilities in those, just for that specific reason. Yeah. Less attack surface, less odds of finding vulnerabilities. True, true. So um, I guess before we end uh, this interview, I guess, are there any other sort of things that you'd like to share or talk about or just say to the, the bug crowd community um, before we go? Oh yeah, hack the planet. Hack the planet, there you go. <laughs> of course. Cool, so um, if people wanna learn more about you and, and kind of follow you, um, where can they do that? On Twitter, really, okay. uh, Elmroot. Okay, cool, uh, twitter.com slash Elmroot, and then uh, you're um, um, root on, um, on Bug Crowd as well, right? Oh yeah. I yeah. go by the nickname of PHP, my admin on Bycross. That's right. That's right. I forgot <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, it always cracks me up uh, when I see that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I think it's funny because if you go to bycrow.com uh, front slash PHP, my admin, you go to my profile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the reason, basically. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much yes. for your time, Frederick. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you have an awesome evening. You too. Thank Take you very care. much. Peace. Cheers. Thanks.